Hello, I'm Simon. Welcome to my workshop. In this video, I'm going to be adding a depth stop and gauge to my pillar drill. Now, many years ago when I bought my budget pillar drill, it had a depth stop and a um, depth gauge on it, but it kept getting in the way and the depth gauge wasn't very good, wasn't very accurate, it flexed a lot. So uh, I took it off and I haven't had it on the drill for many, many years and it's now lost. Recently I've been wanting to try and um, use a depth stop, so I've been investigating how I can add a depth stop to my pillar drill and not have it flex as much as the old one did so that it can actually be used in a meaningful way. Let's get tinkering. The chuck on a pillar drill is held in with a morse taper so I easily removed with a mallet and spanner. I took a few measurements and designed something that I thought would be suitable in SketchUp and printed it out. This is version 1 and my measurements were slightly off because the hole needs to go this way a little bit. I just need to measure by how much. It looks like it's about 3 or 4 millimetres. 3 millimetres I think, so I'll build another one where the hole is 3 millimetres that way. The part is designed to be a very tight friction fit, so I heat up the rod hot enough to slightly melt the plastic and push the part onto the rod. A nut and bolt secures the part to a flange on the pillar drill. This is the Mark II. Mark I was slightly out in terms of its dimensions. This was too far or too close to the spindle. So this one's got the correct distance. And it works quite nicely, but if I then put some pressure on here, watch this. You can see it's flexing. So I'm trying to prevent this flexing. So I've made or making a Mark III, it's going to be a bit thicker, it's going to accommodate this section here so it's going to have a wider circle on it, that will give me another 4 millimetres of thickness. I'm also printing it with a brim which will hopefully this lifted up in the corner which is why it's a little bit thinner here than over here, so that will just make it thicker as well. So I think all those things will increase its rigidity, so we'll see once that's printed, if that works any better. There are two parts to the fitting. One is fitting this into this hole. I need to heat this up because it's a friction fit and it will slightly melt the outside of this and it should go in nice and firmly. So I'll warm that up in a minute. The other bit is this bit fitting in here. You can see this has two diameters. This bit fits perfectly it's very secure so once that's tightened down with a bolt it'll be um, it'll be really good so I've now just got to fit this in here which to do that I need to first warm that up so out with the heat gun again to warm the rod I let that get a little bit too hot, so I'm just going to wait for it to cool down before I do anything else. A couple of taps with the mallet secure the chuck back in place.
So I think we'll put this down to experience. It's a it is a depth stop, but it's a bit of a fail because when I hit the stop, I can still move the drill a little bit. It's because there's quite a lot of leverage here, I think. Yeah, it's pretty stiff. It's just that last little bit, you can see there's some flex there. I could make this out of solid plastic, but I'm not sure it'll make much difference. At the moment it's got an infill in it, so it's partially hollow inside. But you can see there's still that bit of flex there. Anyway, I'll test it and see how consistent it is. I start by drilling some holes in some scrap MDF. Then follow up with the countersink bit. So I tested these with a countersink bit, mainly because the depth being slightly wrong on a countersink bit, countersink bit really does notice. And actually they've come out really well. They all look pretty consistent. So whilst I thought it was a fail, I think it's pretty good actually. Um, could it be better? Yeah. I think if it was made out of metal, it would be a lot better. Possibly if it was made out of hardwood it might be better, but for a 3D printed part it's actually doing its job quite well. The original was plastic, but the original was quite flexible from what I remember. That was one of the reasons I got rid of it, was that the consistency was um, pretty poor, and the inconvenience of it getting in the way all the time meant that it wasn't worth that poor inconsistency and it was easier to do it by eye. I don't think I could have done them by eye and got them all exactly the same. So I'm really pleased with that. Now if I had the tooling I would make it out of metal but I don't. So I'm pretty pleased. Let me know what you think. Do you think this was a good use of a 3D printer? Would you have done the same? What have you done something different? I designed this little pointer only took six minutes to print and it only took a few minutes to design we'll now see if it fits and does its job So the pointer fits on OK, but it's not pointing to zero, and this isn't tall enough for it to point to zero. So I need to add a little dog leg to it, or just make it deeper, so that it points to zero. And it looks like it's about five millimeters out; it needs to be five millimeters higher. So I'm going to modify the design of this part, and um, I'll try again. So here's the new part that I've just made. about double the time to print because it's a bit taller. Let's see if it works. Perfect. Well I'm really pleased with how this turned out. If you want to make your own, then I've left the link to the 3D files in the video description. If you've got any suggestions of mods that you'd like to see me make for the pillar drill, or any that you've made yourself, then please leave them in the comments. And I'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.
If you like this video, why not subscribe by clicking my logo? It's free and YouTube will add some of my videos to your feed. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.